Now you probably know what this guy is already. It's a grass snake. And I know I talk about them loads on this channel, but that's because they're just so superb. They're beautiful, both in appearance and in personality, in my opinion. You've got that beautiful olive color skin with black striations. And then you've got that unmistakable yellow collar there. And it's the appearance I'd really like to focus on because there are around 3,600 different types of snake in the world. And in terms of anatomy, they're all pretty similar. They're all long wriggly tubes, aren't they? But in terms of color patterning, they're all extremely diverse. So the question I want to ask is, where does that diversity come from? Why does it exist? And do these very species specific colors and patterns have species specific functions? <laughs> Look at that. Earlier this year, when I was in the Sierra de Huautla in Mexico, I was privileged enough to help release a northwestern neotropical rattlesnake and a boa constrictor back into the wild. Now, these snakes have very different personalities, but also colors and patterns to the humble grass snake back home in the UK. And that kind of got me thinking as to whether there could be any adaptive scientific reasons behind the differences we see in the patterns and behaviors of different snake species. So it's pretty clear that the grass snake, the rattlesnake, and the boa all have very different colors and patterns, but they also have very different ecologies and behaviors. The grass snake is a rapid pursuit predator of its prey, which lives in marshland. The rattlesnake is a venomous ambush predator of open areas. The boa is an ambush constrictor of forested areas. But is that just by chance? Or are an animal's colors and patterns actually good predictors of their behavior and their ecology? And if so, why? Now to test that hypothesis, we need to do something called a comparative analysis. But it's okay, because a group of scientists have already done that for us, which is quite handy. Basically what they did is that they looked at photos of snakes, looked at their colors and patterns, looked at their behaviors, looked at their ecologies, and started to make links between all of those things. So what are the results then? Well, the results showed that snakes which are quite plain in coloration or have stripes which run longitudinally along the body, those kind of snakes tend to be pretty defenseless and they tend to rely on speed um, when escaping predators or when they're in pursuit of their prey. And that seems to match up pretty well with the lifestyle of our grass snake, of course, because that has quite plain olive green coloration. And that kind of coloration is good in that context because there aren't any reference points along the animal which another animal could follow if it was chasing it. So that's all very good. However, if you've got transverse stripes or blobs on your body, then maybe um, that kind of lifestyle isn't the one for you. Instead, you're better off not doing anything, just staying where you are in ambush and relying on camouflage. And that's exactly what the rattlesnake and the boa do, albeit in different contexts. The rattlesnake relies on disruptive coloration in more open habitats, um, to conceal itself, whereas the boa lives in more covered, um, shaded areas. And in those kind of scenarios, blotches tend to work best to match with the dappled light coming from the treetops. Now, I don't want to give the impression that we know everything, actually, because there's still a lot of stuff we don't know. There are some exceptions which prove the rule, and there are just some patterns which we still haven't got a clue what they're for. One of the most peculiar, I think, is another snake, which is actually um, pretty familiar to us. Well, should be anyway. It's the Adder, or the European Viper. That has beautiful black and white um, zigzag coloration. The males do anyway. And there's still multiple competing hypotheses as to why they have those colors. Some people think that it's a form of warning coloration, warning predators that they're venomous, which they are, of course. Other people think that it's a form of dazzle coloration. Now, dazzle coloration is a very weird form of camouflage indeed. It's the one we don't properly understand. Who knows really, but what I'm trying to say is that this myriad of different colors and patterns that we see, not just in snakes, but across the animal kingdom, they all have their own adaptive purpose. And now, in 2019, we're still trying to work that out. And if that's not inspiration to fuel a curiosity for nature and the natural world, then to be honest with you, I don't know what is.
Thank you very much for watching this. Very kind of you, of course. Um, if you want to see more, then why not head over to Instagram and follow my at Benito Explains account, where you'll receive exclusive wildlife and science content. Go on, go and do it right now. You'll find the link in the description below this video. Get at it!